Hey, it's Lauren. So for today's video, I'm going to kind of be doing a get ready with me walkthrough review of several newer launch products. Some um, aren't like the newest of new, but for the most part, all of them are new to this year. I'm sorry, I live by a busy street and there's this guy who really likes to rev his motorcycle. Yeah, so we're gonna be hearing that. And then my landlord's doing something with a bandsaw, so. That's our soundtrack. Well, so I've already done my skincare. I moisturized my face with the You Live Moisturizer. I have really been loving this still. It's got quite a dent in it. It's like Manuka Honey Base. I love that. Um, but that's not like a newer launch I'm gonna talk about. Um, I'm going to now put on the Glossier Invisible Shield. Um, this launched at the beginning of this month um, as you probably know, <laughs> since it was everywhere on Instagram and YouTube and it's just a lot of places. I became a Glossier rep this month, so they didn't send this to me, but I did purchase this with store credit, so FYI. And I am a Glossier rep, so if you want to get 20% off your first order, you can use my link that's down below or, um, get nothing uh, if you've already purchased from them before, except you'd be supporting me. So that's down below. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this guy as I put it on my face. You see how first up, how little comes out on a pump? So you need two, three, four, five. It takes me about five pumps to get like my face and down my neck. Um, I usually do my skincare and a little bit of my makeup, but for the most part, I take my skincare from here to here and even sometimes on the back of my neck. And that's kind of why I go through certain things really fast, just because I treat this area all the same. First off, it's a physical, it's not physical, it's a, a chemical sunscreen, which usually my jam is a physical sunscreen, but yeah, so that's just your own preference right there. I'm gonna use it up and, you know, maybe eventually I'll be repurchasing it because it is such a unique texture. I'll do another pump and show you because it really does like absorb into the skin and feel like nothing. It takes a tiny bit to absorb in. But it has this like really odd, here, let me get it up close. It has this almost like essence, like ampule style, consistency very weirdly gel like and then it just sort of goes into the skin um it does have a slight scent some phone said that it didn't have any scent and it does it has like a sunscreen lemony scent yeah i don't really know what else to say for it except it's a little expensive it's like 34 dollars and it's one ounce and most sunscreens are larger than that the Pharmacy sunscreen is, I think, 1.7 ounces, and it's around a similar price. Same with the Drunk Elephant one. Um, I do like, though, that this has sort of addressing the new technology, just like the other two, um, the reformulated Drunk Elephant one and the Pharmacy one. They're addressing some new, did I say technology? Not the right word. Some new um, research that has come out that says, like, our phones and our computers and the light from that is also messing with our face. So this is designed to address that. What else can I say about it? Oh yeah, the size. It's rather small, so I feel like I'm gonna go through this really fast. And uh, although the pump mechanism is nice, such a little amount comes out every time you pump it that I feel like that potentially gives people a false idea of how much they need. I've seen people do like one or two pumps and that's it. And that's not enough. That's not, that's not enough. Um, and then last but not least is you have to go by weight. Um, I like in my pharmacy one that if I like put it in the light, I can kind of see how much is left. This you really have to like get an idea of how much it weighs um, because one day it's just gonna be gone and you can't really tell. Yeah, so those are my thoughts on it. Um, it's nice, it's okay. If you hate the feel of sunscreen, you might like this and if you're okay, with chemical sunscreens you might like this um i'm on the fence you know i'm doing my own research i've heard that some uh chemical sunscreens i'm gonna put my hair back because it's gonna get in my shit um i have heard various things about some of the effects of chemical sunscreens and you know everybody believes what they believe um picks and chooses their information so still trying to figure that out but 
yeah um also i'm trying to figure out if chemical sunscreens annoy my skin or not um i have never had any issues from physical so um yeah keep you posted all right moving on from there i want to talk about the dr jart tire grass i think it's pronounced sisapair i have had this in a couple videos it was in my like get ready with me recently and then uh, i hauled it and um, i just wanted to touch on it a little bit more let me see if i can find the spatula there it is i have like all this stuff in like, a little box of the things i want to talk about um I did not know it came with a spatula for the longest time. So first up, I was using way more than I needed to because I was like dolloping it with my finger and hopefully I didn't cause any contamination. But now I just sort of do like a little, little scoop. That should be enough. And now this is also a pretty pricey item. I think it's around $50, $52. I did buy it during the Sephora sale, but I think I really, really like it. It's really interesting. It, you know it's green and then like that's sort of like the redness color correcting aspect but then it has these sort of pigment capsules that uh, become beige as you work it in uh, and it does have an SPF as well so which is really nice um, and what I'm trying to figure out if it's working or not for me I'm gonna have to give it a little bit longer and I think it has I think it has been working is the sort of anti-pollution uh, anti-inflammatory uh, complex that it has going on. I'll write it on the screen. Um, cannot pronounce it for the life of me, but it's full of all of these, I believe, Chinese herbs that have like mythology around them. Uh, um, and also studies um, that reduce inflammation and heal the skin. And it also has some Western herbs in it that do the same, like red raspberry um, and yarrow, which are both great anti inflammatory herbs. They're great to take when you're menstruating. Um, actually, yarrow used to be planted on the roadways to battle in ancient Roman times because the leaves you could cut off and they helped stop bleeding. So they were always post planted on like the outskirts of different like battle places, yarrow was. Um, and that's also like part of the mythology around Achilles um, is he would always cover his body in yarrow leaves, but he forgot his heel. And uh, then he got got cut in the heel. So yeah, there's a little little story for you. But as you see, as I put it on, it has helped me get real up close. If it will focus, I've gotten. Uh, it has helped with redness. Now I do have a lot of redness and inflammation going on right here. Um, I ate pretty much an entire pan of brownies this weekend after a couple of stressful days, and um, this is what happens to my face when I do that so um yeah but it does help with redness and on some better skin days I was just wearing this with some concealer and it was lovely this is gonna be like a summer staple for me if my skin is ever nice enough to just use this and get some concealer um but yeah um I really like it it's got titanium dioxide and zinc oxide as the sunscreen actives in it and it's really moisturizing and you can use it like as a primer as well it's good to put makeup on top of so i'm just gonna let it set for a little bit just because it's quite moisturizing i'm gonna let it sink in go rinse off my hands come back and we'll talk about the next thing so this is probably the newest thing uh to this whole video collection of stuff and it is the nars charlotte gainsburg hydrating glow tint can't exactly remember the price of it. Um, it'll be linked down below. I did purchase it with a gift card along with um, the Charlotte Tilbury palette, which I'm gonna talk about next. It was a gift card my mom got me for uh, Christmas to Nordstrom, so thanks mom. Finally used it six months later. Um, yeah, so hydrating glow tint. It's all of those things. It is very hydrating, quite dewy. Um, I don't really feel like it ever fully dries down quite glowy looking and emphasis on tint it says it can be buildable which maybe just the littlest bit but for the most part it's like very sheer very sheer coverage and here's the texture again it's like this very moussey uh whipped style texture um that usually uh when i see more moussey textures it's a little bit more dense and this is definitely more like pudding-y 
color, I believe light. They didn't have the largest range of colors, but since it's a tint, they can probably get away with it. There was, I think, one shade lighter, which was fair, but that was like very pink. And I have enough redness in my skin. I don't need a sheer wash of redness as well. Here's the first layer. As you can see, it doesn't cover up much. I still have some redness from some spots that are healing. And then I do have a little bit of congestion, a little bit. I have some congestion going on along here. Um, not really any active breakouts, just things that are healing and things that are coming to you at the surface. So it doesn't really hide that, but it does give like a really nice uh, skin-like finish unification in a way um, that's really pretty. So I'm gonna go in with a small second layer right in here where I need it and see if I can build up a little bit more coverage, but I don't really think it does much, but I'm gonna do it anyways, um, just so you can be the judge if you think it does. Um, and then from here, I'm gonna go in and do some concealing. So for concealer, I'm going to be using another NARS product. This is the Soft Matte Concealer in Vanilla Light Number no. 2. I got this during the Sephora sale recently. No, I got it at an Ulta sale recently. Um, I got it for 20% off, which was pretty sweet. And I love this. I've already got quite a dent going on inside of it. This has been like my go-to concealer this month. Um, I recently picked up the Glossier concealer as well. So that's been like slowly becoming my concealer these days, but this has still been my, my main lady. Um, and yeah, this isn't the newest of launches. It's still new in the grand scheme of things, but it doesn't have like that new sticker anymore when you go to Sephora. Um, but I love this. This, If you haven't tested this out, I really recommend like going and getting a sample. It, like it's soft matte but it's not drying it doesn't look cakey in a way it's definitely more of a satin finish um, and it does a pretty good job of covering up but still looking quite skin like uh, yeah what else can I say about it oh supposedly it also has like a pollution shield and some sort of um, mix of antioxidants and vitamins I was reading about I can't really speak to them doing anything but that's cool that it's in there I guess I Love this. I think it's fantastic. That is all. Here's my face with uh, more of the concealer on. Um, I could build it up more in this area, but whatever. Nobody's face is perfect. I'll just let that be. From this angle, it's like her skin's fine up close. Nobody's skin is just fine. So I've filled in my brows using my Anastasia Brow Wiz and a little bit of Boy Brow. And then I set the whole face with uh, the Healthy Balance Powder by Bourjois in 52 Vanilla. This stuff is fantastic. Um, oh, got a hair tickling my face. So moving on for probably the bulk of the rest of the video is this guy. This is the new Instant Look in a Palette five minute face on the go beauty glow edition from Charlotte Tilbury. As you can see, uh, it has been much used. Uh, the like number imprinting is gone on the bronze one. Uh, yeah, I picked this up also um, sometime around the beginning of the month. I didn't get it at the same time as the Charlotte uh, Gainsbourg thing. I went back for that. Charlotte Gainsbourg and Charlotte Tilbury. Hmm. Little coincidence of oddness. This is like, it's bronzy, but it's not as bronzy as I thought it was going to be. Mainly because the bronze shade isn't as crazy pigmented as I thought it would be. But it's like the perfect wedding guest in a palette. I wore this as a wedding guest, so that was perfect. So I'm just going to basically put on all of the colors. Just do a quick swatchy swatch of the three colors you have brighten enhance and smoke very very pretty colors i'm gonna go ahead and just start with putting the brighten shade all over my lid it's like a really pretty um not too chunky champagne shimmer shade and i've worn this just on its own and it's pretty nice, which is like a tad bit of eyeliner. So now I'm gonna take, um, oh, I was using 
the base shadow brush from Real Techniques, and now I'm using the blending eye brush from e.l.f., and I'm gonna dip in to smoke and put it in. I am really, really impressed with the matte eyeshadow. It is amazing. This is my first time using any, well, not first time using, but this is my first experience of any Charlotte Tilbury powder products. I've used um, lip liners, and that's about it. Um, and I'm really impressed for the most part. I think they're really lovely. Just using smoke to sort of deepen everything up. I'm not amazing at eyeshadow, but it's kind of nice that these are pigmented, but not so pigmented that you get kind of stuck and patchy, uh, like some sort of pigmented eyeshadows are. So it's kind of like foolproof. It can really be built up to be quite smoky, but this is a Monday morning, so. I can't be too glamorous. So now I'm gonna take e.l.f. brush and dip into Enhance and just put this right in the center. Now the, I think one of the only unfortunate things is when you mix smoke and brighten together, it basically creates the middle color, Enhance, which is like a champagne copper. So that's one of the only downsides is the, it's like when you mix those two, it pretty much creates that middle shade. So, uh, and now I am going to take this MAC liner brush and dip into smoke and just do a kind of smudged line. So here's the eye look that I created with this. Nothing crazy, nothing too out there, but nice. So I lined my eyes a little bit with uh, smoke. I've also used this cheek color right here as eyeshadow and as liner and even the bronzer as liner and that's been really really pretty. So the bronzer is the part where I think this palette is not the most universal. It really works for me but it's not like that dark. Granted it's not orange so that does make it a little bit more universal but yeah uh, you really have to build it up to show really really a lot so that could be a concern if you are darker than me um, it's kind of perfect for me but if you are darker than me that is something to take into consideration so moving on I'm gonna do the blush I'm going to be using the real techniques contour brush I actually love using this brush for blush I feel like most blush brushes like this is real techniques blush brush like Come on, that's gonna go all over the place. So I like this because I can be a little bit more, not tactful, but um, deliberate with my blush uh, placement. And this blush color is a really beautiful brownie rose color that actually has a little bit of shimmer in it, which is kind of interesting, like a gold shimmer. Here is the two blush shades you have right here the swish color, sort of the brownie rose, and then the nice bright pink color. Beautiful individually and great together. Just need a little bit because um, this is like the most pigmented thing in the entire palette. So just gonna mainly concentrate it up here. Now I always like to drag a little bit of my blush that's left um, kind of upwards to give a tiny bit more cohesiveness and same with a little bit on the nose and just in general. And now I will dip into the cheek pop color. This is, I feel like it's quite similar to, I think it's Pink Pop by Clinique. I love that blush. It's a really great bright pink summer blush. So um, I'll probably be using this on its own a lot in the summer. Um, and I'm doing a little bit of traveling this summer. I'm gonna go to Michigan, so I'll probably bring this palette with me because it's so good for traveling, especially since the mirror is giant. Oh, hi. There we go. Oh, and I didn't swatch the bronze shade for you, so I'll swatch it next to the highlighter. Um, bring it up, because I'm gonna move on to the highlighter now. So here's the bronze, and here's the highlight. And I'm not really that used to uh, powder highlights these days. I've been really into my creams, so um, I have to be very careful because it can look quite powdery very quickly. So I'm just gonna take the little bit, do here down the nose, right in this area, trying to do it very slight. I don't want to have a crazy highlight. 
this is also rather pigmented. My hair is definitely drying in a mind of its own. It was uh, partially wet when I started the video and it's going all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna move on to my lips. Now you probably saw this in my haul if you watched my haul. I grabbed two of the Lancome Juicy Shakers back during the sales. I got Energy Peach and Vintage Beige. Now, I just don't like returning things, so I haven't returned this yet, and it just doesn't look good on me. And I haven't seen too many people uh, this look good on, except for some women of color. I saw this look really nice on, but people with my skin tone, I have not seen it look particularly good on. Vintage Beige, though, it's labeled as a nude, is not a nude. This is like a nice, deep, dusty rose. I've got an affinity for dusty, matty, browny, rosy colors, and this is this is amazing. So these can get a little drying feeling on the lips, so I'm gonna go add a little bit of lip balm on my lips and line them, and I'll be right back. So I lined my lips. Um, you don't need to line your lips with these, but since I'm gonna be doing a really full pigmented lip with these, it is kind of nice because the applicator is a little bit chubby in a way. Uh, I do like though that you can just do like a really kind of quickly dotted stain with these like this and do a very kind of K-beauty inspired style popsicle lip. Um, but I'm gonna go in with the whole thing, mix it up, this is part of the fun of these and Fill in the entire lip. So these are fantastically pigmented. It looks a little bit wet right now, but it'll definitely dry down more. It's not one of those li uh, liquid lipsticks though that dries down completely. There'll still be a little bit of like straw transfer and like if I kiss my hand, there'll still be a little bit. Um, but yeah, it will dry it down. I do think it's important to moisturize before you put these on because otherwise they can be a little bit too drying feeling, uh, but I do like the sort of like second skin-esque feel that they create. They kind of feel like nothing when they dry down, which is really nice. So yeah, I think there's only about nine shades of these right now, so hopefully they will expand it. I have my eye on uh, the red one. I think it's Kiss Me Cherie, um, but the red and the pink ones look amazing. I've been really into bright lips lately, although this is, not bright, but it's definitely not a nude. Yeah, so here is the finished look of all of the new products. I'm probably gonna go sort out my hair now as it's finally dry and is looking a little odd. Could put some sea salt spray in it or something. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed this sort of get ready with me rundown review style. If you have tested out any of these products yourself, I would love to know your thoughts on them. Uh, yeah, I pretty much recommend everything I tried out, um, except with variables that I talked about in terms of like your preferences. So this was a pretty fun month for testing out new makeup. I will have a sort of May products video coming out soon. Um, it may or may not be a favorites video or just a products of the month video. I'm, I'm not really sure how to phrase that since I want to include if, like a lot of the things I tried. So it'll probably just be called favorites. Anyways, I wanted to bring up one thing. Some people have been commenting on my videos lately and I love your comments, but some reason I can't seem to respond to you um, and it's not deliberate. Um, there is some sort of glitch where some people I can't seem to respond to. I don't know if you have your settings set to private and that's why I can't reply to you. So I'm not trying to ignore you or be a dick. Uh, I try to respond to everybody who takes their time to leave me a comment because yeah, that's really nice of you to do that. And I love getting them, so thank you for them. And thank you, I've gotten a bunch of new subscribers lately. Thank you so much. This is turning into a really long outro, so apologies. Um, but thank you, I appreciate all of you that like my videos enough to come back for more. Anyways, um, hopefully I will see you in the next one and bye for now.